Amanda. Yes. You're homeless here in Seattle. Yes. Tell me about it. Seattle's beautiful. What do you want to know? How do you survive out here? You're living under a bridge. Um, I try to remember that for as many negatives there are, that there must be that many positives. And so I keep looking at the positives and I keep trying to remember that there are beautiful colors and that, that, that I'm saving my life and that that's what matters. And it doesn't matter where I live and it doesn't matter any of it, just so long that I'm alive and that I'm making a difference in this world because no one's gonna stop that. I'm gonna do the right thing and I'm going to save my life and hopefully do good in the lives of others. You remain positive even though you're going on to the bathroom outside. Yeah, it's like camping. But you keep telling yourself that. You have to. You have to. Because you have to get through it. And you have to remind yourself that you are a person. You are not an object. You are not a thing. And it doesn't matter who threw you away. And it doesn't matter how you were treated in the past. You are worthy of getting through this. And so you have to be positive and you have to love yourself because no one's coming to save you. You gotta do this. And that's the only way to do it is if you've gotta be a Disney princess to do it, be a Disney princess. That's my advice. Be a Disney princess to get through homelessness. Do whatever you gotta do. Right. If you've gotta pretend to be a pirate, if you gotta pretend to be a traveler, if you've gotta pretend that all of it is something that you want desperately, do it. However you've gotta do this to get through to this. escape the reality. Yes. Which is why a lot of people use drugs. Well, it gosh, this pain. can you imagine? Okay, I complain a lot about addiction. I'm, and I complain about the, them letting people flailing out, or, you know, they don't treat it. And so we have to be around it, those of us who are not on it. I complain a lot about that. But I also, on the other hand, understand, for example, I have a list of conditions. If I was not able to do what I do, and I had to sleep on a cold sidewalk, and had nothing to temper the cold or the pain or any of it. Yeah, I can see grabbing something to get through it. The pain would be unbelievable. Sometimes you, nobody gets this. Well, I'm not gonna say nobody gets it. A lot of people get it. Actually, there's millions that get it in the United States because there are millions that are just like me or worse off than me. Um, and it's, like I said uh, earlier, that I do look at the positive. I try to get through it by thinking whatever. It's a beautiful day, it's a wonderful life, there's gorgeousness, whatever, I'm camping. You were just telling me the birds. You like the birds the in the birds morning. The birds singing, it... whatever, you know. The, I've made friends with all the spiders. It's wonderful. But then you get companies coming, Mark's coming. Haynes is coming and you want to clean and you're like, okay, company's coming, I'm going to clean. And then you realize that there is nothing going to fix this. The reality hits and there's nothing that makes it pretty. There's no roses to throw on it. There's no... You feel like the day you did when... when you lost it all because you've realized that for all the work you put in, you still live under a bridge. And that's where you're at. 
And so you hurry up and you find the prettiest leaf and you're like, okay, there it is, beauty again. <sighs> Where's my birds? Because you gotta get through it. So that's how you do it. If you're not gonna turn to drugs. <laughs> so now we just met. <laughs> In person. In person, known yeah. Each, we've known each other online. Yeah. You actually reached out to me with a photo of your morning cup of coffee saying good morning. And then we run an online support group for homeless people and you became part of that. Uh -huh. Now you're an admin uh -huh. in the group. And uh, then you're part of this Haynes campaign. Yeah. <laughs> Where millions of people have seen you washed your hair. Oh, really? <laughs> in the cold. Well, you've seen your story. Yeah. <laughs> and seen how you live out here, but also saw your positive attitude. Yeah. It has to be shown, though. I mean, the thing is, is it's embarrassing at first, you know, and then you realize that it is what it is. And if people don't see this and they can't get it, then we are doomed. We're doomed to repeat our mistakes. And people can push blame and say, it's this buddy's fault and somebody's fault and everybody's fault and whose fault is it? But in the end, it is what it is. It needs to be fixed. So really blame is pointless. We just need to end homelessness. Yes. Forget the games. Yeah. Forget the bureaucracy. Because that's it. It's I, you over. Know. And here's the thing. It won't ever be solved if we keep, if we keep talking about it, all there's going to be is talk. And people are dying right now. And, and right now I can't wash my hair because of the nerve damage and it's too cold. And that seems like a really little thing. Okay. I get it. It's not that big. Not in the scope of everything. but it's kind of big to me sometimes. It is big. So I have learned, grown to respect you as a person because you help everybody that you can. You fight to be positive. You're not scared to be vulnerable. Many a times you will live broadcast <laughs> crying like you are now, <laughs> Yep. the challenges that you're going through, and I think more people need to see that to see That's you. exactly it, authenticity. Because the thing is, is I realized, because at first when I was vlogging, I, I was just like, always waiting until I was happy and able to communicate everything in a positive way. But I was in that, even though I felt, I was, I'm completely honest, it was misleading to some people. They were taking it as, look at this. I wasn't giving the whole story. I wasn't showing that I'm brain injured and there are these things that pop up and are not cool and are not fun and are real challenges and that people face these insurmountable odds sometimes. And that we get these questions like, why don't you? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't, why don't, why don't? And so we need to start answering some of this, you know? We, I think as a homeless community, a lot of times we push that away and we're like, well, you just don't understand. Okay, well, let's, let's help. And that's where I wanted to be is um, a bridge, I guess, because I lived the other life as well. And uh, unfortunately, um, I knew a lot of people that were very harsh towards the impoverished community and, and, and the poor in general. And uh, so, in one way, I'm blessed to know exactly what they think, and I'm able to combat it. And so, I do that. And all I can say is, I try. And that's all anyone can do, is get up, show up, and try. Well, thank you for inviting me into your home. Yep. We're gonna have a fun week. Yay. I'm committed to getting you out of this. <laughs> And we're going to do that. Don't know how. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but we're going to do it. Um, if you had three wishes, what would they be?
three wishes. I would wish for the strength to continue fighting. I would wish that others could get out of this too. And I'd wish for understanding and compassion for everybody, like just knowledge, I guess. Three wishes are hard. Well, They're hard not to take for yourself. Well, thank you very much for talking to me.